Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I have another good video here. Uh, I already got my hands on the car a little bit. Honestly, when I start with this, it was just the battery dead and uh, uh, intelligent battery sensor replacement. So I'm like, oh, okay, so that's nothing. But then all of a sudden, the car is at no start. I go over it and I check, you know, on the Drive Pro. Uh, let me, sorry for the turn around. Let me, I did a, a full energy di uh, diagnosis, which is a normal thing to do, trying to check, um, you know, the status of a car that I'm not familiar with. I also did a full battery report. And as you can see, the limits of a start startability were down to like 29%. So battery was shot was like five bolts on it. So um, let me show you two things. This was uh, the first quick report that I did today at 9 a.m. I was late in the afternoon because I got so much to do that now I'm back into this one. Uh, you guys will see a good diagnosis that I did on uh, Ben's E320 2005 is coming out first than this one. So well, coming back to this one, as you can see by here, we have, you know, intelligent battery sensor, communication and some plausibility codes, start, uh, starting activation and so, but you know, the battery was so low. And I also have these because the throttle valve, uh, it was a, a code for this. And the latest one that when that happened, which is, on 70,568 miles, as you can see, the voltage of the battery on terminal 87 was only 10 volts. So definitely that's no good. So again, another reason why I replaced the battery. Uh, I mean, th those of us who work on, on Mercedes and BMW, we know that, I'm sorry, I've got to pick up things. When you have something like this, you don't really look, uh, look too much. I did all those reports and tests just to make sure that I show that to the customer because the battery wasn't that old, uh, at least like less than three years. But so I did a full uh, quick test on the car and modules that had no fault at 9 a.m. I'm going to focus you, uh, focus you guys, or get the attention. I, it's hard for me that word. <laughs> Is the fuel pump. You see, no falls, no no problems. But then now that I have a no start, as you can see, this is a, an hour later. I have the car running for like an hour or so. Just, you know, make sure everything is working good. And then I got mo modules with no falls. And uh, let me go back. Well, let me show you that we have a, a bit serial data interference or interface signal. The brake switch, uh, which I don't care too much, is working. I know that is a, is a good or important thing on an automatic transmission. This is a, a manual transmission, so we have no, not much of wrong with that. So what I want you to see is right here at the bottom of this page, it says modules that are not fitted or did not communicate. And guess what? Uh, we have fuel pump module. So I'm like, okay, I talked to my manager. Uh, this is not a battery issue. This is a separate stuff. Then what I start working with this car. When he come here, he was having a throttle angle or limp mode. And then again, voltage issues. As you can see, this car has been sitting for a long time. Customer say, says that it's like probably a month I did some checking, and that's probably uh, maybe it's not it's not the correct data. Uh, let me try to find it here in between all these pages. So on the same report, not the battery, in the energy diagnosis report, it also show you long parking periods. And I don't know why it says in here that the longest parking period determined in the selected period of time was 970 days. 
So is this car was sitting for that long? He said only a month. Maybe he just got the car. I don't know. I don't have the whole full information. But I told my manager, I need a little more time. I want to check this car more. I want to, when I come back and I want to, you know, put the ignition on and read the codes again, see if I can communicate or start a car, the battery is dead and it's brand new. So we got a huge draw. So right now I put some charge on it. It's an 11.3, which is not so bad. It's a good battery, it will recover. But then I went ahead and tried to see the fuel pump module. And then when I opened this car, <laughs> look at this guys. We have a, like my friend Keith does, a swimming pool, pretty much. And right here where the fuel pump module, or the fuel pump uh, is under the seat, rear seat on the right side. And the module for that is on the right side under the armrest, and that is mold. All that white stuff you see there is mold because of corrosion from water. So this is being happening a lot, a lot, long time ago. All right, so definitely this is a problem. All right, guys, so I will try to dry this up, try to uncover more and see what else I can find in here because hopefully you guys can see that again this is mold and this is again a swimming pool look at this <laughs> I mean wow I don't want to do a hopefully the, the fish in there didn't die when I throw that <laughs> oh my god wow all right so let me see what can I do with this, how can I dry it, and uh, remove this uh, fuel pump module and see if, we, if it's any good. I mean, <laughs> I doubt it, but we'll see.